The government has released 24 papers reassuring businesses on what would happen in the event of a no deal. But is a no deal really better than a bad deal? Theresa May said so, but today we're going to find out. It's time for the big Brexit question. <laughs> So on your left is Theresa May. She will be representing the Chequers deal. On the right is Dominic Raab. He will be representing a no deal. In a moment, I will bring up a topic relating to Brexit and we will decide which deal is better for the UK. Let's bring up the first topic. Trade. Ensuring open and positive trade for the UK is one of the biggest fears about leaving the European Union. We will no longer be part of the single market or customs union, but it also opens up massive opportunities. Being outside of the customs union means we can trade with nations outside of the European Union. So what does Theresa May feel? She wants a common rule book for goods and she wants regulatory flexibility on services. Wishy-washy things that sound very similar to being inside the customs union and single market. Dominic Raab would obviously be subject to World Trade Organization rules under a no-deal scenario. We will be maintaining EU measures which matter to the UK. Sounds a lot more sovereign to me than the Chequers deal was offering. And the Trade Remedies Authority will be operational by the time the UK leaves the EU. If you don't know, the Trade Remedies Authority is there to stop different countries dumping goods on other countries and subsidising the cost of them. It's there to protect business. It seems like to me, Dominic Raab and his no-deal scenario is more sure and more certain than Theresa May and her Chequers deal. In fact, you almost wonder why we are negotiating at all. If, if the biggest concern of Brexit is uncertainty, for me, I'm going to give this point to the no deal scenario. Let's bring up the next topic, the Irish border. The Chequers deal wants to avoid friction at the border. In a no deal scenario, Dominic Raab has said to businesses to speak to Dublin that's not a great way to speak to businesses, Dominic. People are concerned about the Irish border because of the Troubles. It's still a contentious issue that the UK owns part of Northern Ireland and Ireland owns the rest. So for that reason, I'm going to give the Chequers deal the point. Let's bring up the next topic. Justice. When people voted on June the 23rd, 2016, they assumed that sovereignty and independence would become a thing. And therefore, UK law would rule the UK over European law. But the Chequers deal says that we will be free from European Court of Justice oversight. But they say that the European Court of Justice will only have a role in relation to the interpretation of those EU rules to which the UK had agreed to adhere as a matter of international law. In other words, if we're part of scientific bodies like Atmos, or if we want to fish in European waters, or if we're still part of the customs union and we're being environmentally unfriendly according to the European Union, we will still be subject to sanctions under European Court of Justice law. It doesn't sound very similar to what people voted for on June the 23rd. Under a no-deal scenario, we, the UK will continue to accept batch testing of human medicines. Workers in the EU will continue to be entitled to the rights they have under UK law. It sounds a lot more sensible and sovereign to be under UK law in this case. And to me, the no-deal scenario seems to be more under UK law than the Chequers deal scenario. So for that reason, I'm giving the no deal a point. Let's bring up the final topic. 
Immigration. A lot of the reason why people voted for Brexit was their concerns about immigration. They felt immigration was getting too high too fast, and they wanted to control it. Under the Chequers deal, Theresa May wants to permit only paid work in limited and clearly defined circumstances, but yet she doesn't limit or clearly define those circumstances. She wants to introduce a UK youth mobility scheme, and she wants provisions in the mobility of people for the mobility of services. In other words, if a service needs people, they will let them in. Under a no-deal scenario, Dominic Raab has said that EU citizens will have the right to remain. But of course, a no-deal scenario would mean no open border with the European Union, which would essentially end free movement of people. Or would it? Government leaks suggest that the government is planning no more checks at the border under a no-deal scenario. Other sources suggest that the government is planning to throw resources at the border, again under a no-deal scenario. Throwing resources and making a hard border with the European Union presents two problems. Number one, it's expensive. Number two, it presents a problem with Northern Ireland. Will that border end up being treated differently from the rest of the UK border? And if so, what will that mean for the people of Northern Ireland being treated differently to the rest of the UK? If there's really to be no more checks at the border, that will madden and enrage Brexiteers who voted to leave the European Union. An open border with the European Union would not be leaving at all. Under the Chequers deal, the things suggested implied that we won't be controlling immigration to the tens of thousands like the government suggested. It implies that immigration won't fall because of the economic worries lower immigration presents. So for me, awarding a point on this topic is difficult, but I'm going to go with what we're told about the no-deal scenario. That under a no-deal, free movement will end. And that, of course, is what most people voted for on June the 23rd in the Brexit referendum. So for that reason, I'm going to give the No Deal scenario the point. And that's it for today. No Deal wins 3-1. Don't forget to check out episode 1, join in the debate below, and subscribe.